Good morning, folks. We've got jaw-dropping stuff in the lineup today. The sun woke up with a look like nobody better mess with me. Solar flares rising, biggest sunspot bonanza in years, all turning towards an earth-facing position. We've got galactic science bleeding into catastrophism, and we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun brings the first semblance of real sunspot maximum. Major active region development on the south and all surrounded by large-scale coronal holes. It would be surprising not to break into the M-class flare range today, as we are on the rise due to what will go down as one of the most incredible sunspot developments in the SDO record. Wow. Look at all of these. Right now we have four sunspots capable of unleashing solar flares, and their magnetic complexity is gaining by the hour. We are in a solar flare watch for at least the next three to four days, and we'll be tracking every second of it. Solar wind is worth mentioning as well. Moderate coronal hole stream impacted early this morning after the density forward shock. Not a weak stream, not a strong stream, just enough to start bringing the KP index back up off the floor. May jump into instability state as the stream endures. Now let's go to the center of the galaxy next, where they have taken their previous looks a big step further. The worst thing about their old looks is they didn't show much for the galactic core itself. But in the new look, we do indeed have a constant return marker for Sagittarius A, the central nucleus of our entire galaxy. They are focused on the orbits, and that's great science as well, but it is nice to actually see that nucleus in there as opposed to imagining it. First look at it the humans have ever had. Up next, the Parker Solar Probe has touched the solar atmosphere and is delivering back more data than anyone could sift through, unless you know exactly what you're looking for. It's their magnetic field monitoring that interests us the most, the magnetic field of the sun, which threads through the entire solar system near its equator and creates that direct magnetic portal for plasma between the Earth and sun. There is nothing in the solar system that doesn't constantly interact with these fields, and as they are crossed near the equator, the conditions and magnetic environment above versus below that magnetic reversal point in the solar wind is utterly profound. It's what happens to our star, magnetically, when it crosses the galaxy's version of the current sheet, also with its magnetic fields, threading through it and denoting the moment of galactic magnetic reversal. Truly is a large-scale system. As we see in the sun, the fields come from nearly any latitude but ride quickly to the equatorial zone so that they do flow out in that central disk system. These systems, whether at the largest scales of the galaxy, or in the solar system, using magnets in a lab or when you work it out on paper theoretically. They all have the same rippling features, and that's the electric field carrying the magnetic connections and the magnetic reversal of the system environment. This is what's happening to our solar system right now. The nearby stars tell it, the other planets and the solar magnetic field tells it, and so do the changes on Earth more significant than a paltry one degree of warming. That's what the playlist is. That's what our book is. Both can be found at the links beneath this video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.